Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 15 Quince. of the Calypso Cigar Shop Podcast. How are you doing, Brandon? I am doing fine, Randy. How about yourself? Doing well. 15 doing well. episodes of this crap. <laughs> Believe that. <laughs> it's not crap. It's excellence. Broadcast excellence. It is broadcast excellence. I'm getting a little bit of a, a feeling in my pants about this. Really? I may have to take a crap. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we smoking today, sir? Well, we are at the Calypso Cir- Oh, I said Calypso it. Shigop. I, I was Shigop. We're at the Calypso Shigop. <laughs> Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. It's Randy's turn. It is. To say stuff wrong. <laughs> what are we smoking today, Brandon? We are smoking the Rocky Patel Private Cellar. We finally got a Rocky. Rock, finally doing a Rocky. And this is this is a true blind review for me. I've never smoked this I have cigar. never smoked this either. And actually, um, that smells pretty damn good, man. It's a little, yeah, a little bit... Uh, it's very well, very tobacco-y. Yeah, I mean, it just smells like straight up tobacco. It's got a nice uh, oily wrapper. Yeah, not too toothy or anything like that. I don't uh, see cold whole... draw's not great on mine. Oh yeah, I haven't, I haven't even cut mine yet. So, but um, so we are at the Clipso Cigar Shop and Lounge here. You almost did it. Too. I almost did it. Yeah, <laughs> in Richardson, Texas. And um, what is that phone number if they need to call? Nine seven two seven six one nine nine zero three. So give us a call, and we do have the ability to take orders over the phone, and we do have the website at calypsocigars.com. Calypsocigars.com. Eventually, when it comes on. When they get it going. Yeah. yeah. We've yeah. had, had a couple of hiccups, but we're working on them. And we'll get there. By the time you listen to this, hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. That was a shitty cut. I cut that badly. It's just, it? just a shitty cut, or all it is. Hey, 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 hey. Do we have fire? I need fire. Yeah, there's fire. Oh, there it is. It's right in front of me. <laughs> Soft flame. Soft flame. Wow, it took, I can't believe it took us this long to get a rock here. Mm-hmm. That is odd. They're, they're the evil empire now, right? <coughs> ah, it's not even lit, and you're choking on it. Oh, I just got crap in my mouth on the cold draw. Mm. Hmm. Like that sand, that sandy feeling. <laughs> yeah, I hate that. Yeah, that's like um, this isn't short filler, is it? No. But, but, I don't know, man. How was that first uh, first it's taste there? I don't know. No? It just uh, seems well balanced. Has, has a nice flavor right off the bat. Let's see. It didn't taste like great on the lips like a lot of cigars do before you light them, but it. Uh, yeah. You have to uh, use the triple flame. Alrighty then. Triple flame it is. Holy crap. <laughs> it's turned up to 11. This one goes to 11. It goes to 11. Great movie. Great movie. Great scene. Yep. And if you can hear Toby in the background. Hi, Toby. He's, he's guarding the store. He's welcoming a customer. Yeah, I don't know about that. Well, he's trying to bite their <laughs> knees off. Or ankles, he I guess. Get he's more of an ankle biter. Yeah. True. <laughs> All right, let's try this bad boy. What do you think? I didn't light it enough. That's what I think. Lighter? Jeez. Just leave it out. We're going to need it. Yeah. Smoked anything interesting this week? Um. Yeah, well, I went to that... Um, that cats event, mm-hmm. which is the cigar aficionados traders and sales group on Facebook, and so I got a lot of cigars from that event and smoked a bunch of those, and that's not bad. No, I think it's going to be medium body. Yeah, we'll see. But um, yeah, I smoked um a pre-release UF thirteen mm-hmm. uh, Drew State cigar right. that I had gotten uh, from a friend of mine a while back, and that was absolutely delicious really really good i haven't tried the the uf 13 dark yet which you guys mm-hmm. have here we have yeah. but i haven't tried it yet we'll get to it eventually and um smoked a uh, awesome probably i've only had a few opuses in my life maybe a handful like maybe four yeah. or five and this was a uh, 2011 2011 or 2010 i think it was 2011 uh charity box opus x uh lancero and it was off the chain i've never really? had wow I mean, I've had opuses before, and they were, eh, you know, like, I really yeah. don't get all the hype. And right. This one really, really lived up to the hype. And I, I'm a big Lancero guy anyway, yeah. so I was expecting Me it too. to be pretty strong. But mm-hmm. this one was just the amount of flavor through it had a lot of complexity. I mean, the thing changed like four times on me. Yeah. And um, it was, it was nice. really, really awesome. So Nice. I've only had, I've had four opus also. And uh, I, I've never bought one. They were all, they were all given to me. Yeah, I think I can. I think I can say that. I, I did buy one. I bought one. Um, I'm still sitting on it though because it was fresh when I got it. And um, all the ones I've smoked so far has been, so far have been gimmies, you know, mm-hmm. from friends or bombed or whatever. So, right. 
but yeah, that one was a, it's definitely something special. I could see getting more of them, but knowing how much they are, yeah, not a lot more. <laughs> right. <laughs> they are, right. They are. We should mention we're smoking the Toro size in this Rocky private cellar. And uh, do we know what the wrapper and binder are? <laughs> Did we do any research? It is a U.S. Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Okay. Nicaraguan binder and filler. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's about it. So it looks like it's basically almost a puro, but not quite because of that broadleaf <laughs> Connecticut wrapper. Well, the Connecticut. I guess it's sun grown, or I don't know. Must it's pretty be. dark. It must be it's real sun dark. grown. Sun grown Connecticut. No, let me find. Because it doesn't taste like Connecticut at all. Private cellar made with Nicaraguan binder and filler, Connecticut broadleaf broadleaf wrapper. Yeah. Huh. Been working on it and aging it for a number of years. Really. Comes in a robusto, Toro, torpedo. About eight fifty a stick. Yeah. That's what, yeah. So far, so good. I'm liking it. I'm um, very, very much a uh, just a. Uh, to me, it's just like straight up tobacco profile mm-hmm. so far. I'm not getting a whole lot else on it, but we'll see as it progresses. We just started it though, so who knows? That's the joy of trying something new. It is. See That's one of the things I love about it. It's yeah. Just yeah, seeing what we're going to get out of it. I'm um, getting definitely getting some earth. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a very earthy. Yeah, so very. far. Yeah. What have you smoked this week? Anything new? Uh, nothing new. I don't think. I don't think I ventured. You smoked that uh the Gen Two. What's that? What's that one? Oh yeah, the. Uh, San Luis Rey, uh, it's called Gen 2, Generation 2. Mm-hmm. Very good smoke. I'd never even had a San Luis Rey because I'd always heard bad things about them. Uh, but apparently they're remarketing and repackaging and all that kind of stuff, you know, trying to pump up its image. And it's a, it's a good stick. We yeah. probably will review that at some point. Yeah, we'll review it soon, I'm sure. And then, uh, yeah, I think most of them have just been sticking with my go-tos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The dark Corojo and mm-hmm. I haven't had a Tempest in a while. I need to get Tempest. So uh, what's that? What you like the Pelagrosa? What's the others? What are the sizes? Is it the Mar- the Pelagrosa is that Corona and then uh, kind of a short Corona. Yeah. And what not, are the other sizes? Uh, that Azarosa is the Robusto. I had the Azarosa this weekend. And the La Niveladora or however you pronounce it, it's the box press Toro, hmm. which I didn't like as much. And I, you know, in our review, I really didn't like that size. I really think. Robusto or Corona is the way to go in that yeah. cigar. Yeah, they had the um, Jose Blanco was giving out the Azarosa, mm. and um, I had one of those when I was there. It was good. Always a a good one for me. Oh yeah, absolutely. So uh, yeah, I went to the uh, to the Cats event and um, wound up interviewing uh, Jose Blanco, which we'll have the interview later in this episode or next episode, or next maybe. episode. Yeah. Maybe it depends on if I put it together by then. Yeah, because I'm lazy. And uh, we also had a interview with uh, Jorge Padron. Cool. And um, it's funny because I always hear people call him George, and it's mm-hmm. spelled Jorge. Right. And I'm like, is it George or Jorge? He's like, come on, man. <laughs> like, All right, Jorge. <laughs> and he just gave me that look. Yeah, we have a customer. His name's George, and he comes in, and my dad said, uh, hey, Jorge, just to be funny. Mm. Apparently, he doesn't like to be called Jorge. <laughs> so oh, yeah? Just, uh, I was like, oh, I was just kidding you, George. He goes, oh, no. But I don't like that. Okay. But I will stab you in the face. <laughs> right. Gets all angry about it. Pretty funny. Wow. Yeah, no, yeah, uh, Jorge, uh, Jorge likes it, though. It was uh, Caesar uh, was there as well, Caesar Padron. Mm. And, uh, oh, this guy brought this cool thing, and he brought a Millennium box in. Oh, yeah? Which is uh, uh, pretty hard to get Padron cigar. I think they have very limited production on it. Mm-hmm. And um, he had a box and all the cigars, and he just brought the box in and had him sign it. So that was cool. Right. And uh, the guy was, like, shaking and <laughs> he was nervous. Like, Jeez, dude. He, he was, was nervous. Just, just a guy. He was meeting a celebrity. Makes cigars. It's not like he was meeting us. I know, right? Even yeah. if you're that nervous. I was like, hey, I'm with Glypso Cigar Review. I mean, you know, nervous around right. me. <laughs> I'll interview you, maybe. Well, ah, you're nobody. Screw you. <laughs> <laughs> we have to, uh, in the next break, we need to go on Facebook. Because we had those two fans on there that have commented on some. We need to give them a shout out for commenting. Hmm. I'm yeah. honest. Yeah. We're getting cool. a lot of likes on Facebook. You know, not we're not commenting, but we're getting a lot of likes, and I'm I'm attributing it all to this podcast. I think so too. Yeah, it's us. It it's is us, us mostly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you know, yeah, it's us. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, most definitely. So us. this this event uh, was yeah. it just people walking around talking to? Um, uh, no, there was um there was type rope walkers and uh, people walking on fire. No, yeah, it was just mostly people sitting around smoking cigars. Though. But it was benefiting the um, Cigars for Warriors. Awesome. So everybody, you know, doing raffle mm-hmm. tickets. You buy a raffle ticket, you could win stuff. And they were giving away some really cool stuff. They Did gave you win away, anything? Uh, no, I didn't win squat. Um, but they gave away a um, 
a box of nines. Mm -hmm. It was like early, I guess, first release, like box of 30 count nines, which I'd never wow. seen of a 30 wow. count box yeah. of nines. Uh -uh. Some, some guy won that. And then the same guy won like a box of A's. And I'm like, dude, really? Like box of what? A, Liga A's. Oh, wow. It's like a really, you know, A size. Yeah. Uh, Liga. It's like two in a box or whatever. Those are hard to get as well. Uh, but they're giving away all kinds of other cool stuff too. Just lots of boxes and artwork and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it was a really cool event. And uh, Jose Blanco's straight up super, super nice guy. Um, just talked to everybody. Uh, Jonathan Drew also. Very, very nice guy. Uh, made time for every single fan that was there. Um, That's it was cool. Super rock star status. Like as soon as he got there, the lines were like, it was like waiting to go see. <laughs> it was like literally waiting to go see roller coaster. You know, it was really? just like. The lines were ridiculous. People waiting all day to see him, and he gave like everybody like thirty minutes, you know, just to wow. talk to him and get to know him. And and I mean, a lot of these people already follow him anyway, so he knows who a lot of people are from Facebook. He's, he's a big uh, he's a big media uh, guy. Yeah, he is. So. He's good about that. Um, like I think it was oh eight. Mm -hmm. We had an event here, maybe oh nine. We had an event here, and, and he showed up. And that's exactly what he did. And we probably had fifty, sixty people in the room, and I I watched him literally make sure that he addressed every single person in the room sat and talked with him for a few minutes yep. it's a real good dude yeah very cool and um just real personable too real funny and yeah. um crazy he was handing out all kinds of cool stuff um i didn't get any of the cool stuff though but <laughs> he'd already given it all away by the time i got there he's handing out like um there's a new i guess they're doing a new version of the my Uzi weighs a ton that's a uh, kentucky fire yeah i was reading about that yeah kentucky fire bread yeah, or something like that something like that so he had a couple of those he was handing out, um, and then Willie Herrera was there as well, and he was handing out uh, some of his. I don't think he handed them out. I think he smoked them all. <laughs> <laughs> he has like a new blend that he's doing of his or Herrera Esteli, and um, so there was that. But it was a yeah, it was a real cool event. Um, mm -hmm. The weather was it was weird. It was like the apocalypse over there. It was like we get down to San Antonio, and it's like they have had no rain forever, and they get mm -hmm. like eight inches, and people are drowning. Wow, yeah, you know, they're smoking about that. cigars. So <laughs> better to be indoors. Yeah, well, it was outdoors. That was an outdoor event. <laughs> it was a mostly outdoor event. The only place it was indoor was the bar. Really? So Did you smoke in the bar? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, it was a it was a restaurant slash bar place. Is basically what it was. You know, it's yeah. like one of those places that's got like a large outdoor area oh, where okay. they have concerts gotcha. and stuff, and yeah. then they have a bar inside. So uh, Jorge Padron was inside. He's like, I'm gonna be inside. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Damn, I dropped my cigar and my ash fell off. Did you really? Son of a gun! I had a good ash going. Yep, that's what she said. <laughs> So far, tasty. I mean, yeah, it's a nice smoke. I had not heard really a whole lot about this. Mm -mm. To tell you the truth, I didn't even look at any reviews or anything because I just wanted to be completely blind on it. Yeah, and um, very much a a um, if you like straight up good tobacco cigar, it's got a lot of that tobacco flavor. Mm -hmm. It's got a good earthiness to it, uh, but not to the point of where it's um. Some earth, some earthy cigars get too earthy, and it's almost like you're smoking dirt, you know. Yeah, well, you know, also a lot of times with earthy, you'll get that uh, almost dark chocolate taste, and mm -hmm. I'm not getting any of that with this. But yeah, it's just it's like straight up earth, and maybe I guess leather, a little bit, mm. yeah. a little bit of leather. But uh, it's not real spicy. No, but uh, it does have some nice flavor. Yeah, it's just real kind of in between. I don't uh -huh. know. I don't know. It'd be good. It'd be a good cigar for um for probably someone new. Yeah, coming up, which I think a lot of Rocky Patels fall into that range maybe i don't know some yeah yeah i mean can you think of a rocky patel that's like a total ass kicker i can't really think of one that's just like really strong the closest really old world reserve old world the reserve, old world reserve maduro has got a lot of flavor yeah a lot of flavor uh i think the 15th is is badass i mean it's it's a tempest quality as far as strength i would think pretty okay. close yeah see I, I smoked that when i was already into medium and full body cigars so i can't really cater i can't say I don't know, because to me it's just kind of medium, I guess. But yeah, but yeah, it does have a lot of flavor for sure. Well, with Rocky, it's, it's weird with Rocky. Um, I'm real hit and miss with Rocky. The uh, the vintage series, you know, we've talked about that ad nauseum. I mean, I love the '92. For a Connecticut, I love the '99. Mm -hmm. I like the '90. It's just not my favorite. I don't like the '03. The vintage '03, I do not like at all. The Cameroon. Yeah, you know, I. I... There's only certain Cameroons that I like. I like the Fuente Cameroon. Yeah. Not a fan of the 2003 either. I, I tried it, and it was one of those things where I did a box split with a friend because mm -hmm. we were both like 92 oh, you, a lot. You regretted that. Yeah. I was like, son of a gun. It just was too much of a – yeah, I ended up trading the most off, I think. I, I just didn't like them. But, um, the Valador is okay. It's I haven't not, had that. It's a medium-body cigar. Um, 
the Renaissance, I think, is overpriced for what it is. I don't think that's all that. You know, at least to me, it's just not a cigar that I would want to smoke. The fiftieth is good. I haven't uh, had the fiftieth yet. It's really good. But I don't. You know, again, the price. I mean, it's a twenty dollars yeah. cigar. I don't know that it's necessarily a twenty dollars yeah. cigar, but it is a very tasty cigar. And see, the decade I've always thought was very overrated, and people love the decade. But mm. I'm okay the decade. I like the fifteenth more than the decade. No, oh, no, no doubt. Me, yeah, absolutely. I'll even take the old world reserve. Old yeah. world reserve. It's yeah. hard to say that. It is old world reserve. So yeah. I'll take that over the decade any day. Yeah. So. Absolutely. That's nah, just me. But, um, so where are you at on Rocky? I mean, um, you know, I, I smoked a lot of Rocky starting up, and um, I've been away from it for a while. And I don't, I don't think it's because I had bad experience with them. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I don't think I've ever had a Rocky that just like totally canoed on me or anything like that. Um, it's just a matter of you know you try other things and then you kind of step away from a brand and you mm-hmm. eventually you come back to it or you don't. Right. And uh, I always tend to come back to the 92. I, yeah, I still like absolutely. that 92, the vintage 92. Mm-hmm. And I, I come back and I smoke a 15th every now and then. I like those a lot too. Yeah. And I've heard the uh, Old World Reserve Lancero is really good. But I've, I've heard that too, that. but I've never had it. Yeah, so we'll have to dig some of those up somewhere and try those someday. We had a human around. I think Rocky sent it to us. Mm-hmm. Not Rocky himself, but the company. Yeah. And it was an Old World Reserve humidor. It's beautiful humidor. Very classy. Very classic looking also. Had the old world logo on it and everything. And we had that humidor for like two years. Mm-hmm. And then Matt was placing a Rocky order and he said, uh, send a couple of old world reserve samples. We'd like to try it. I said, what made you think that? He goes, I, he goes I've been meaning to do this for years. Every time I see this humidor, I'm like, we need to try this old world reserve. So they sent it in Maduro. And boy that was like you know, like Todd said smoking a pound of fudge this was like mm-hmm. smoking chocolate cake it was just really good yeah and um, so then we got it in the Corojo because we're all big Corojo fans and not so much buddy you didn't not, do it for you not, I'm not crazy about the Corojo yeah that just depends I mean sometimes the wrapper really makes the, the blend mm-hmm. especially if they're keeping the blend the same and just putting the new wrapper on it right sometimes it needs a little more tweaking than just a new wrapper have you had it in the Maduro I've had the Maduro yeah, yeah. I like the Maduro a lot yeah nice yeah but i would like to try it in a lancer oh, that's yeah really we cool. need to try that eventually yeah. now I, my burn's not great i don't know about yours but mine I started off really good it started going awry and now it's fixed itself yeah look at that that's yeah like, mm, just as you day. said you didn't haven't had one canoe it's starting to canoe on well you. i don't know if that's canoeing it's just an it, it, burn. it'll become a canoe if you don't fix nah, it i don't want to fix it i want to give it some time i'm going to give it a little okay. bit more we'll right. see if it catches up if it doesn't then i'll then i'll correct it but okay and, and you know and that's the thing i don't mind correcting the cigar uh, ever so slightly because all I really need to do is probably touch up the end and it'll start catching yeah. up but when you see people just like burn the whole side of a cigar mm-hmm. and just you know, I know. it's like well uh, I'm guilty of that sometimes if I'm just like talking and not paying attention to what I'm smoking during the day yeah. I'll just you know yeah. but um, you know I don't really I, I think the the animosity towards towards Rocky probably stems from the fact that they're just really all over the place and people it's like people want people to be successful they want but people want themselves to be more successful and they want right. other people to be successful maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Well, just, just to let thing. people know, not to pull back the curtain too much because I don't know that much about Rocky as a person, uh, but I've met him. Heck of a nice guy. Uh, he was here the week that the uh, Super Bowl was here, mm-hmm. uh, here in Arlington. And uh, he's a big Packers fan because he's from Wisconsin. And this was the Packers-Steelers Super Bowl. And uh, so I went to an event and uh, asked him to get a picture made. And he's wearing this huge Green Bay Packers jacket. And uh, so I sent it over to Matt's wife, Matt uh, Badosky, the owner here at the store. His wife's from Wisconsin, so she's mm. a huge Packers fan. So I just sent her the text that said, uh, hey, Rocky, Rocky Patel's a Packers fan, too. And here's she showed her the picture. She thought that was cool. Uh, but he's a heck of a nice guy, at least very personable. Mm. Uh, his brother Nish is pretty much the same way, very personable. And he does a lot behind the scenes supporting the CRA. He's very active and... Uh, you ought to at least smoke his cigars for that because he's doing everything he can to protect your rights uh, to smoke cigars in this country. And granted, it's to help him out. He's got a business, but it's yeah. it's still very important to us that the work he is doing behind the scenes. Same with uh, Marvin from Drew Estate. They're both very active. And, yeah, you know, true. we really appreciate those guys. Yep, for sure. Well, we're going to go ahead and get, uh, we're pretty much at the end of the first third here, so we're going to take a little bit of a break and we'll be right back. And we 
are back with the second third of the Rocky Patel Private Cellar here at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. Where are we located, Randy? Richardson, Texas. At, uh, not, and you can reach us at 972-761-9903. You can like us on Facebook. Catch us on YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, Spreaker. And at the moment, that's it, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so look, that's even it out. It's nice even out pretty good, yeah. Yeah, it's getting there. So. so, yeah, we were talking about a little bit about Rocky Patel and kind of the, um, the negativity that a lot of people have towards the brand. Uh, I think a lot of it stems from the fact that a lot of people are, are just looking at one side of the brand. Because mm-hmm. I know Rocky Patel is one of those brands that they do a lot of specialized cigars for the Internet. Right. Like if you go on the Internet and look at certain companies, it seems like every single one of them carries Rocky Patel and they carry the normal stuff. They'll carry the 92 and the old World Reserve and whatever, mm-hmm. but they'll also right. have weird offshoot lines yeah. that he makes for them right. that you never see at a at a B&M. Right. And I have a feeling that a lot of those aren't necessarily top shelf mm-hmm. Rocky Patel, but it's, you know, a budget line for this particular vendor right. so that they have something to sell and it's, you know, oh, he made us a special blend and stuff like that. So And I do I know that their 90s and 92s that you can get online are mm-hmm. not the real 90 and 92. We've been told that by the reps. Uh uh, and it's been confirmed. Yeah, the different wrappers, different binders, and it yeah. does change the flavor of the cigar. Yeah, so, does. you know, that, that makes a difference. So, if you're going to judge a line um, based on, you know, based it on what you get at the B and M, because that's the yeah. same. That's the stuff that's getting rated by the magazines. That's the stuff that yeah. is going to be the the one true cigar that you should try. And I think everybody should try a 92 if they have a nine, haven't had a 92, uh, uh, even an Old World Reserve or mm-hmm. a. Fifteenth, uh, fifteenth yep. is still a great cigar. You can go in most places and get it, yep. and it's going to be a good smoke. If there's something that you don't normally, you know, if you, if your if your cigar uh-huh. quote unquote isn't there, you know, that's always a good go to cigar. And if you if you like Connecticut and you're, uh, you know, like into the milder stuff, try the ninety nine. I think it's an excellent Connecticut. Uh, Brandon's not quite the fan, but we're going to review that again sometime or review that so Brandon can smoke one again and. Yep. Form become opinion. far more wiser about it than he was. It's been a long now. time since I've had one, so yeah. So <laughs> but, yeah, but I'd it's say, excellent, you know, Connecticut. Really I'd say is. based, you know, based on on the on the facts, um, you know, because I, 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 I've looked at um, I get stuff in the mail from those vendors, and I can look through the magazine and maybe spot one Rocky Patel that I recognize, and the rest of it's all this weird stuff that mm-hmm. you know is made specifically for them, and it's you know not going to be as good as the stuff that you get at the B and M. So right. he may be hurting himself a little bit brand wise doing that, but. You know, yeah, it's all about the yeah, almighty dollar. Yeah. So it's all about making money. Yep. Yep. And not many, and not many of other. I can't really think of any other brands that that really do that. Um, you don't see a whole lot of special made Fuentes. I no. think like Smoke In has the Solaris, which I think nobody else really has that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't see. You, you see Alec Bradley. Alec Bradley does it some. They have some some. Oh, starting out there. to do it. Yeah. Uh, someone was telling me that. Oh, is starting to do that. Yeah, they they have their own little offshoot brands but they don't see they're kind of smart about it though they call it something else they don't yeah. call it you know oliva something it's right. the, it's a different name by, by oliva. oliva yeah so i think that's probably a better way to do it but yeah you know live and learn with these guys absolutely so yeah definitely support your b&ms if you have a b&m in the area always go by give them a shout learn some things about new cigars you know don't forget don't be don't be afraid to talk to your tobacco and this thing can probably um tell you a little bit about some things that you like and that you may not have tried yet um, right. There's always new stuff out there to try. So many different cigars to try, and um, <clears throat> smoking the same one over and over again, you're not really doing yourself any favors. Not no, bad really to not. have a go-to. Not, bad. not a bad to have a go-to, but you know, branch out. You don't drink the same beer all the time. Too. I guess a lot of people well, drink the same beer. Do, yeah. uh, Natty Light. <laughs> yeah, God. Yeah. Uh, if you're Keep drinking Natty Light. You're probably smoking cigarettes. I don't know. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Probably so. So yeah, but they were um, they were doing some good work over at that at that cats event. They were you know getting money for um, cigars for warriors, and they had uh, people signing up for the CRA there. They were doing a you sign up for four years, you got a humidor with a bunch of cigars. And oh, so cool! That was pretty cool. That yeah. is cool. Neat, neat deal. Absolutely. Wish you could have gone, buddy. You would have uh, I would. Yeah, we had some issues here at the store with staffing. So if you'd I gone, you could have fifteen infused cigars now, just like me. Fifteen infused cigars. Wow! I, like I'm me. kicking myself. I'm kicking myself. It was a whole so, bunch of acid and stuff like that? Or what? Yeah, it's like acid, Cuba Cubas, and naturals, and uh, other stuff as well. I gave it all to my dad. My dad likes that stuff, so. 
Not that there's anything wrong with it. It's no, just I, not my yeah, cup of tea. I'm just kind of bad. Yeah, fit, tobacco really Special, give me 15 of those. I'll, yeah, I'll take I, those. I, gave, I think I gave my dad like five or ten of those. So wow. I kept a couple for myself. But. Yeah. The Negra. I like that yep, better the than Negra. The, I kept the, the Negras, gave uh-huh. them the Dulces, because yeah. they had like a, as, as luck would have it, I'm waiting in line to see Jonathan Drew. I'm next in line, and here comes Brian Poehler mm-hmm. and uh, two other of the Drew Estate ambassadors just opening boxes and just people just rushing and grabbing like handfuls of cigars. And I'm like, really? You know, <laughs> I was like, my buddy said, my buddy sitting next to me, just looking at me like, ah, shaking our heads. And I go, I call Ryan over. I was like, Ryan, come here, Ryan. It's like, what the heck, man? <laughs> like, I, get, I get nothing. Cause I'm standing in line. He's like, Oh, hook you up, man. So he came back and gave me some cigars. That's cool. cool. Yeah. Did Ryan's you know cool who you dude. were? Yeah, had you, yeah. Y'all had already talked. Okay. Yeah. Ryan, Ryan and I have seen each other a gazillion times. Okay. He knows me. So yeah, he's a good dude. We'll get him in here eventually. It's Ryan Poehler. He's the uh, the Drew State rep. Who's also the son of Rick Poehler, Rick who's Poehler the Fuente from, rep, and the brother of I don't Jason know, Poehler. Jason Poehler, who's yeah. the and Tom Hay. Poehler, Tom yeah. Poehler of the uh, AKA. Yeah, AKA. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, American Kick Ass. Yeah, and uh, Ryan reps another big company too. I can't remember right off the top of my head, but Ryan does. Yeah. Oh, Drew Estate and I did not. Know I don't that. remember. I always see him just Drew Estate. I don't know. Yeah, things, uh, that's his big one. But he I know does, his, there I know is his, another good sized one. Yeah, I know his brother does Tatuaje and some a couple others, I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that family's just, I can't even imagine Christmas at their house must be just like cigars just <laughs> flying everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But they're good dudes. Yeah, very good dudes, yeah. Yep. They just need to be a little more easy with the cigars every time. <laughs> yep. Wait till you're not in line before they go. <laughs> I know, I know. What would they give you? Uh, I got some tobacco specials. That's, oh, that's what they, that's what they're giving out. So yeah, I got like four or five dulces and some other stuff. So those went to my dad, and he was very appreciative. He loves oh, those. He likes those a lot. He likes those in the naturals. He tends to. Uh, I gave him an acid. He wasn't too big on that. So really, yeah, they're so sweet. They're, oh. Yeah, eh, oh. and they smell weird. They smell like um, perfumey. Yeah, it's like um, bad, you know, dime store perfume or something. Yuck. Yeah. Like Walgreens version perfume. No, yeah, it doesn't smell good. All anyway, right. but people love them. So yeah. Hey. So, all right. What are you so looking up like, over there? I am looking up horror movies because um, you and I were talking about horror movies the other day, oh, yeah. and I started thinking about what would be your, if you had to pick, mm-hmm. your top ten horror flicks of all time. And we're doing pure horror, not just slasher or anything like that. Um, yeah, you can kind of. It doesn't matter. The, yeah, you okay. can cover the bases. I mean, you can uh, like. There's you know. I guess, what would you consider horror, though? Would yeah. you consider, like, Alien a horror movie, or is that a sci-fi uh, movie? I, I would call that sci-fi myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it wouldn't be on my list, because I'm not a big fan of that movie. But, you know, Halloween's got to be number one. Uh, you know, it, it really started the genre, kick-started it in the 70s, and got it, you know, it led it into the 80s, because the 80s is pretty much when it thrived, when it was at its height. Yeah, well, they're starting to come back a little bit. I kind of like that. I've always been a sucker for a slasher movie. Um, I love the original Friday the Thirteenth. I think that's just a lot of fun. Um, wow, that's a good question. Why don't you name some? Yeah, uh, I, I, I might have to throw The Exorcist in there because that. Oh, just, absolutely. That's absolutely. one of those ones that's you know scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. Yeah, absolutely. Even though I knew how they did all the special effects, right. they're still really creepy. Right. Um, Halloween for sure. Um, yeah. I'd say Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah, just because it was so. Yeah. It was you so know, jarring. And, yeah. You know, Halloween and Exorcist have the two best themes. The theme music, I think, is excellent mm-hmm. in both those. Songs. You can say that about Psycho, too, though. And it uh, has to that's be on the list. Yeah. That's true. Even though Psycho is really, you know, it's more of a slow burn. And it's, yeah, and it's more psychological. It's a psychological than, thriller than yeah. this horror movie, I think. But, but uh, you know, it was uh, ballsy at the time with that shower scene. That was uh, yep. certainly can, a slasher scene right you there. Can, you can see a boob out of focus if yep. you look hard. Yeah, Janet Lee. Janet Lee boob in, out of focus. <laughs> that family has good boobs. Yeah, it really does. Janet yeah. Lee, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee yeah. Curtis. Nice epic boobs. boobs, yeah. Yeah. Ridiculous, but you just got to yeah. put the bag over the face. And yeah, man. <laughs> Although I thought, it, I thought there was an era where she was kind of she, she looked She looked really cute in, in uh, Fish Called Wanda. Oh, yeah. And uh, trading, trading Places yeah. with um, Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd and Eddie yeah, Murphy. Yeah. Murphy. Yeah, Okay, slasher or horror movies. You know, there was a movie as a kid. I'd like to revisit it. I don't know anything because uh, I've only seen it as a kid. It's called Burnt Offerings. Yeah, I remember Burn Offerings. Yeah. That was a scary movie as a kid. The family moves into a house, and it's kind of the house is possessed, and so the dad starts to lose his mind. It's a really good movie, at least as a kid. I loved it. Yeah, Amityville horror kind yeah. of. Yeah. 
I, I was very disappointed in that movie, I was Amityville too. Horror. Well, I had read the book. My mom had read big, the book and yeah, was going on and on about it, so I couldn't wait to see this movie. And, yeah. And you lame. think about you know horror movies, and you think about Stephen King because of horror books, but I can't think of a Stephen King movie that, to me, really is a good horror movie. I'd say even The Shining was a psychological horror movie. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. really can't think of any. It. Everyone always talks about it being scary. I wasn't. That's really... made for TV. It's yeah, no, it can still... only be so scary. Yeah, yeah. it's just people freaked uh, out. You know, I think clown. misery's scary. That's that's a horror film to me. Yeah. Having that happen to you, you know, being in James Conn's shoes would be horrific. I wouldn't want to, ooh, even especially later, I used the wrong term about the yeah. shoes. <laughs> exactly. When he's only got oh, one shoe. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, well, you got a list of horror movies over there? Um, I got a, there's a couple. Um, but I don't really agree with these lists. Let's see. This is, this is an IMDb list and, you know, IMDb is, be this yeah. are typically, now, this is from the IMDb editors though. So this is, oh, okay. this, this is isn't somebody's fan. list. Okay. This is their list. Okay. But this, of course, is based on reviews, mm-hmm. so um, I, I don't tend to agree with it. Number ten for them was Sweeney Todd. The is that a horror musical movie? Is that with a horror Johnny movie? Depp? That's a musical. That's yeah. not a. I don't know. Whatever. Okay. Number nine, Twenty Eight Days Later. That's I a liked good it. flick. I, I like that it. flick. Yeah. Oh, I forgot uh, about all the zombie stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Exorcist was number eight. Okay. Which is good. Saw the first one. The, f- the first one's excellent. Yeah, the first one's great. Yeah. Uh, Zombieland, which is a that's comedy not a horror movie. That's a comedy spoof comedy kind of Cloverfield. Thing. Uh, Seen it? It's not bad. It's not bad, but it's. I don't it, that's the, that one of the camera things where it's yeah, like but the Blair see, Witch that was thing. more of a monster movie than a horror yeah. movie to me. You know, um, Psycho they have as okay. number four. Number three, Shaun of the Dead again with that's the comedy. comedy. So yeah. Number two is Alien. We just talked about okay. that being a sci-fi movie. And number one is The Shining. So that's a no a, Halloween on that list. No that's Halloween. A, that's on that a list. bogus that's list. A bogus, bogus list. Bogus you know list. A, a bogus. <laughs> I just made up another word. Um. Oh yeah, zombie stuff. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. Return of the Living Dead. Both of them. I liked both. Uh. No, this is a cool list. Okay. Here you go. Top ten cliche horror movie deaths. Okay. <laughs> this All is, right. This is from a website called horror-movies.ca, okay. which I don't know what that means. Is that California or is that... Maybe. Maybe so. I don't know. Let's see what the top 10 cliche horror movie deaths are. Oh, there's a naked chick. That's a good sign. Yeah. Number 10, the detective has on a... The detective on a on his last mission. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's yeah. Uh, uh. I'm about to retire. Uh, uh, I'm dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the prankster, the guy who spends half the film joking oh, about yeah. getting killed and then, yeah, then gets, gets killed. killed. Yep. The pot smoking hippies is number mm-hmm. eight. Yeah, always a big win for Jason and his mm-hmm. crew. It's got to be premarital sex. Yeah, of course there has to be sex. Yeah. Number seven, the wino with the bottle in a bag. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Number six, the smart ass jock macho loud. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Guy who thinks his muscles and white cracks will save his ass, and then he yep. ends up with his head on a pipe. <laughs> Number five, the cop false hero to the rescue. This one's always sad to me. You think you're coming to save the day, but only the, they get they get whacked and oh yeah 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 so there yeah. The black man, number four. Yeah, <laughs> that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Big yeah. God, they just can't win, can they? No. Number three, the mentor, the one who knows oh, yeah. it all. Yep. Number two, the dumbest girl with the biggest tits. Yeah. That's okay. a great list. <laughs> a good list. <laughs> and number one, you already said it. Premarital sex. Teens having sex. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a very cool list. I like that. This is a cool site. Good comment. Let's see what they have as the top 10 horror movie. Top 10 Peter Cushion movies. Wow, cool. You have a lighter. Mm-hmm. I have your lighter. Thank you. You can have it back. Oh, and it's dying, too. What is with us? This is a cigar <laughs> shop. We can't get anything to light. <laughs> that is awesome. So what do you think it's so far of this? It's very, it's mellowed out a lot. It's yeah, some it's of that really mellow spice at the, that modest spice at the beginning has kind of gone away. It tastes tastes good. It's a very even. I've definitely keel. called this uh, mild to medium. Yeah, very even keel, good flavor, but it is uh, not complex Mm-mm. to say the least. Uh, top ten scream queens. Oh, let me guess on this. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, we'll see what that says here. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess who number one is and see yeah. if I'm right here real quick. Yeah, I'm, I'm Jamie Lee Curtis. Is what I'm that's who I was going to pick. Yep. Let's see. Let's just start naming some and we'll see if they're... Uh, Danielle Harris. Danielle Harris. Who the hell is that? 
I'm just saying she was in Scream movies. or something? Or? No, she was in she Halloween was a kid H2O. in Halloween 4. Yeah, gotcha. And then she was in the new one. Yeah. The first Rob Zombie one. And then uh, no, she's, the in, first, the she's first in the one. Hatchet movies. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. I got you. No, she's not on the list. She was the next door neighbor on Roseanne. I don't know if you remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, and she was Bruce Willis' daughter in Last Boy Scout. So she's been around. Yeah, uh, she has been around for a while. Jamie Lee Curtis, obviously. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis is on there. So we'll go with start, we'll start number 10. Okay. Catherine Isabel. Don't know her. She's number 10. Known for Ginger Snaps, oh, Freddy okay. vs. Jason, okay. Carrie, and American Mary. I mean, she's in the new Carrie. I don't know. Rose okay. McGowan's number 9. Okay. And Scream. Great That's picture nice. of her there, by the way. That is nice. The Pokies. Yep. The Pokies from Scream. Yep. Number nine, or number, sorry, number eight is Nev Campbell. Nev Campbell, yeah. absolutely. Okay, yeah. Scream. You make that many movies, you're going to be on the list. Yeah. Number seven, Sarah Michelle Gellar. Okay. For she did a lot of, you know, I know what you did last summer, yeah, and Scream, and The Scream. Grudge, yeah, and the, the Grudge, yeah. She did a bunch of those Asian remake movies. Debbie Roshan. She is a uh, queen of, like, trauma and yeah, all the yeah. B stuff. There you go, yeah. Uh, nice rack. Yep, I, did, I just looked at that. That's very nice. Number five is uh, Cherie Moon Zombie because she's in every movie that Rob Zombie yeah, makes. Right. And uh, number four is Aja Argento because she's in a movie, every movie that uh, Dario Argento makes. Oh, okay. He did a bunch of Italian yeah. horror flicks. Right. Used to make good movies. Now they're just horrible. <laughs> uh, number three is Janet Lee. Of course. Okay. Well, you know, she's the original. Really, only she was Psycho and Night of the Lupus, and that's really. Oh, I guess she was in The Fog. Mm-hmm. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Number two is Faye Ray. Oh, she did more than just King Kong. She had a bunch. Oh, okay. Know. Did she? Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. Number one is Jamie Lee Curtis. Okay. Of course. All right. You got to give her that. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, that's a pretty good list. And what's she, let's do a rundown of her slash or, or horror movie. She did The Fog, Halloween. <clears throat> Terror Train? Terror Train. <coughs> that was her, right? Uh, Yep. Terror Train was her. That was with the clown on the train oh, or something like that? Oh, Prom Night? Prom Night, yeah. Remember who the principal was in Prom Night? Uh-uh. Leslie Nielsen. Mm-hmm. And this was post, ooh, there's a pee popping. It was post Airplane, too. Oh, yeah? He played the principal of the school. He still did a couple of serious things after. Yeah, he did. But not a whole lot. He was the bad guy in Creepshow. Yeah. In one of the episodes with uh, uh, Ted Danson. And he's the guy that raped Barbara Streisand in that court movie that she was in. Nuts. Nuts, yeah. Yep. But, uh, yeah, I I saw Prom Night, too. Yeah, but four or five months ago it was on, and I watched it. I was like, that's right, Leslie Nielsen was in that. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, I haven't seen that in forever. Okay, so do you tend to like zombie movies more or slasher movies? Um, I, I, I go through phases. Um, mm-hmm. I, I probably watch more zombie movies than I do slasher movies because they're a little easier to get past my daughter because there's yeah. typically less you know, nudity in them. Right. Uh, when you get into the slashers, it's all about TNA. Yeah. Um, this is a pretty interesting list, though. I got uh, This is just top 25 horror flicks of all time. We'll see if we agree with this here. Okay. Uh, this is from IGN, which is a video game site. Okay. But they've got some really good top 10 lists and stuff. So 25 on their list is Cujo. Which okay, that's a eh, decent scary. It was movie a decent from, Stephen from King Stephen movie. King, yeah. yeah, it was decent. The, the special effects do not hold up. No, <laughs> it's a really no. bad fake looking dog, and dog with basically goo on him. And mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. Frankenstein's monster is number twenty four, which huh. is the uh, the sequel. Right, right. Um, number th- oh, this is just okay. This is um sorry. These are top twenty tw- top twenty five horror movie villains. Oh, okay. So this is just the so villains. Cujo was just, was so Cujo's villain. number twenty five. Uh, Frankenstein's monster is number twenty four. Okay. We're twenty three. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. <laughs> are you serious? That is not not a villain. <laughs> number twenty two. Norman Bates. I think the uh, villain would be Zool or was it not Zool? Uh, Gozer. Yeah, Gozer and Argausius. From oh Ghost yeah yeah from, I was thinking Psycho I'm like what are you talking yeah. about no Norman Bates Norman Bates is twenty figured he'd be higher he's twenty two number twenty one Damien Thorne okay from the Omen series yeah a little creepy ass kid who was later yeah, Sam Neill yeah yep did you ever see oh you seen uh, the what's that movie the last one called the, the one with Sam Neill yeah yeah the that last was good good one. Um, I remember that being weird because I, I remember I went and saw it with my parents and I was laughing because every time someone died. And I guess this is a choice the director made. Mm-hmm. They would show a person twitch. So, like, they would uh, die, and you'd see, like, a hand go, yeah, or, like, right. a leg go, burr, burr. and I'm like, what the hell is that? You know, just Was that the, the one where the guy kills himself by tying the gun to the yeah. door? That, yeah, that was a freak me out scene when I was a kid. Yeah. The Creeper from the uh, Jeepers Creepers movies. That's a, That first one wasn't bad. Yeah, I like the first it. one. I dug the first one. Yeah. Ghostface, number 19, of course, from, from the screen movies, yep. yeah. Candyman's number 18. But see, uh, 
Ghostface was a whole bunch of different people. Yeah, I know, but it's just the, I guess, okay. the idea. The of idea, okay. Candyman's number seven, uh, Candy 18, Man. sorry. Candy I Man. never really... Nah. The great Virginia Madsen was in the first yeah, one. Yeah, but that's a crap movie. It was a crap movie. Um, Samara Morin was number 17. From? Uh, this is the Ring series, the demonic uh, child yeah. of the Ring series. Okay. I liked the first Ring. The second Ring might be the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. Have you seen it? No. The dialogue is... It's laughable. you got to watch it. It's almost like you're watching a uh, a trauma movie, dialogue-wise. Wow, that's bad. Yeah. Number 16, Count Dracula. Okie doke. Number 15, The Poltergeist from Poltergeist. Okay. That's a bunch of different... That's, yeah, that's kind of a weird yeah. list okay. there. Number 14, The Thing from the remake, from the John the Carpenter remake. Yeah. That was a, I love that movie. That's one I watch all the time. Uh, 13, Chucky. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Just, you know, it wasn't scary the first no, time. It just got no. less and less it scary as it went along. Yeah. Number 12, Reagan McNeil from Exorcist. Exorcist yeah. Yeah. I see that. Uh, number 11, Jack Torrance. I don't know who that is. That Let's sounds see familiar. Oh, uh, oh, that, um, Jack, okay. Um, Shining. Oh, yeah. Jack. I knew the name. Yeah. Number 10, Jaws. The shark, I guess. <laughs> the shark. <laughs> yeah. I guess which really we're going to call, what's his name, Bruce? Bruce the shark? Yeah. Number 9, Zombies. In general, in general <laughs> generalization, their zombies are the scariest thing. Generic is yeah. that. Number eight, Pennywise from It. Pennywise from It. Yeah. yeah. Which is, you know, it's pretty creepy right there. Yeah, look at that is. picture. Yeah. That's, that's Tim Curry being, just creeping it up. Yeah. But anyway, he went from, you know, being Frankfurter to just creepy guys. Yeah. Well, I guess Frankfurter is pretty creepy, pretty creepy too, if you think about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, seven's Pinhead, which, yeah. The okay. first first couple movies, it was actually sort of scary, and then it just got laughable. Mm-hmm. Once Pinhead was in space, you pretty much, once they get to space, any of them get to space... You're pretty much done. <laughs> I think I know who number one is, but I'm going to let you go. Number six is Hannibal Lecter. Damn, I thought he was going to be one. I was going to have him one. Number five is Leatherface. Okay. Number four is the Alien Queen from Alien. Oh, now I know who number one's yeah. going to be. Oh. Uh, you think. Okay. Number three is Mike Myers. No, that's who I'd want to be number I'm, one. Number one's, yeah, okay. That's who you want to be number one? Yeah. You know who number one's going to yeah, be. Yeah, I know, and it's already pissing me off. Yeah, it's, and it's not scary. It's it Freddy Yeah, Kruger? it's going to be Freddy. Okay, number two, two is Jason. Number one's Freddy. Wow. Which, never, Jason. Freddy was never scary. No. Maybe the first movie for okay. a slight, you know, because he was yeah. a pedophile and they yeah. played that angle up and it was creepy, but yeah. he just got so funny after that. I guess yeah. after the second one. The second one was still considered a horror movie, but it was right. just horrible. Yeah. And then after that, <laughs> they got pretty much funny. I'm shocked that Jason was higher than Michael Myers, but okay. I like I'm shocked both. that Jason was higher than Norma Bates, but whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Eh, you know, this is a list for people who play video games, so yeah. there cool. you go. Well, we are at the end of the second third here on the Rocky Patel Private Cellar, so we're going to take another little break, and we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back for the final third of the Rocky Patel Private Cellar here at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge in Richardson, Texas. And if someone was going to say call and make an order, where would they call, Randy? They would call our phone number which is 972-761-9903. And we can be found on Facebook, YouTube, Podomatic, Spreaker, iTunes. Slam Internet Radio. Slam Internet Radio. Yep, we're all over the place, guys. So don't forget to check us out on those places and also um, give us you know, a five-star review there. It always helps us out to get us up the, uh, up the ranks there. And um, don't forget to like us and uh, comments are always welcome. We'd like to know how we're doing, what you want us to review and... Yeah. What you want us to talk about? We did have a couple of requests. One was a Gurkha, mm-hmm. which we don't carry, so it's going to be hard for us to review that. But yeah, uh, yeah we could do it off-site, maybe for cigar bombs. Right, but we yeah. appreciate the recommendations, and we, we welcome them. I did actually write uh, the Gurkha reps. I haven't heard back yet, but hopefully uh-huh. they'll send us some samples or something, and maybe we'll do it. But uh, they want us to do, the I guess, the, privates, the private reserve or something like something that. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, which is supposed to be one of the better ones, so we'll see. <sighs> what do so you think your, of this? Uh, hmm, I don't know. It's, um, too, it's mild, too mild for me. Yeah, it's a little too... Um, I don't know. It's getting a little bitter at the end. Um, I could see it as a kind of a noob cigar or newbie. I, mean, I always feel bad talking bad about yeah. it. I'm not saying that it's a bad cigar. I'm just oh, saying right. that for me, being a full body guy, it's a little too mild uh, for me. But I'm glad I tried it. I've been wanting to try it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's always good to try new things. Mm-hmm. So, Not so you mentioned you mentioned slasher movies. What's what's some of your favorite uh, slasher movies besides Friday the Thirteenth? Yeah. We're going off the norm. Yeah. See, and that's 
that's a genre that I'm very forgiving of uh, because I like having them made. So I, uh, I'm not as critical of them, you know. Uh, I just love them, you know, the, the idea that's, that they're being done. But uh, a couple of them off the beaten path, I gave you copies of. It's a right now. It's just a two-parter, but it's a going to be part of a trilogy. The guys working on the third one. The first movie was called uh, Bereavement's the second one. The first one is called Malevolence. Okay. And uh, it's actually the second one in the sequel, but it was the first one released. And then he did a prequel with the called Bereavement. And uh, excellent movies. Very good. Very well done. The first one's done on the cheap. Mm-hmm. Um, there's nobody, uh, writer and director. The guy does kind of like John Carpenter. He writes, directs, and does the music. and everything but it's an excellent one that's about a uh, a bank robbery uh where they they stop at this house uh, overnight you know because one of them's shot in the bank robber or during the robbery and uh they don't know that next door a serial killer lives next door so they're, they're being stalked all night it's a good movie oh cool Sounds and then cool. uh, the sequel is or the prequel is how this killer got it and came into being and it's uh really good they're very violent uh yeah, those are the two that really pop out in my head. You know any off the beaten path ones you like? I'm going. I'm going old school with a couple. Um, it was back, you know, when Friday Thirteenth and and Halloween hit. There was mm-hmm. a whole bunch of stuff oh, that came out. Yeah. Like Sleepaway Camp, you know, mm-hmm. was a was a favorite of mine yeah. growing up because it was just so weird. Uh, Maniac was another one Maniac that I liked one. a lot. Yeah. Um, and these were just you know extremely violent, but it was just they're they're funny in the way that they kill people, but right. you still feel bad laughing about it. But at right. the same time, you're I think that's what makes those movies appealing is that. Right. It is. You can laugh at it. Mm-hmm. It's scary, but it also. I think people like to be scared, so it's a weird genre right. that people um, appreciate. And anytime you go see one of those type of movies in the theater, it's amazing how many people laugh the yeah. whole time. It's just yeah, like yeah. trying to laugh the fear away, I guess. But those were. Uh, I was a big fan of those back then. Yeah, and then the the you know I call those like the offshoots of the Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, then you have exactly. the offshoots of the offshoots like Chopping Mall and yeah. stuff like that. You know, remember were... they did some comedy ones for a while. There was it Student Bodies. Yes, yeah, Student one. Bodies. It was pretty one. entertaining. April Fool's Day. Remember yeah, that one? That one. Yep. I liked I, April Fool's Day. I thought that I was did pretty too. well I done. It was pretty clever. Yeah. Uh, boy, I was just thinking of one from the early '80s that I really liked. Uh, I liked Fun House too. Remember Fun House? Fun House was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, doggone it. Oh man. Who was in it? Anybody? Uh, an actor with a name. <laughs> an actor with <laughs> a name. name. And he oh, had a man. face at some point. Yeah. And... Doggone it. It'll come to me. But uh, yeah, the early 80s was just full of them. That was definitely the height of it uh, of that genre. I, I've, I, I like the slasher genre over the zombie or, or the supernatural. Because technically a slasher movie could actually happen to you. You know, that circumstance could technically happen to you. Yeah, and we talked about um. Well, I think you and I talked about this separately, but not on the podcast. My yeah. bloody Valentine. Yeah, great it was movie. a great one. Actually, yeah. the original and the new one were both entertaining. Uh, very I thought. Fun. Yeah, yeah so, absolutely. So we do have a list here, and this is from um, top ten films dot com with a Z. Mm-hmm. They spelled mm-hmm. it fancy, and they have number ten as Intruder. Do you remember Intruder? Is that the Sam Raimi one? Um, I think Sam Raimi was in it. Yeah, but I don't think. I, yeah. was, I was getting ready to mention but that one too. Had, had chopped in half on the yeah. picture there. It's yeah. a cool special effects for it. Hell Knight. I forgot about Hell Knight. That's the one I was thinking of. Hell Knight. Hell Knight. Yeah, Linda awesome. Blair and uh, Dick, uh, Dick Van Patten's son. Yep. The Prowler, um, aka Rosemary's Killer. I don't know that I've yeah, seen. Yeah, I've, I've that seen had the that. Weird, had the weird guy. It was like a mm-hmm. uh, monster mask with, yeah. a, with a German Nazi helmet or something like that. I thought. Yeah, yeah, I saw that as a kid, but I don't remember much about it. Prom Night and Terror Train. They got listed both together. Okay. The Burning. The Burning. Hang on, one. I know the Burning. Uh, Here's the description. The Burning is a great slasher film for a number of different Jason reasons. Jason Alexander's in it, if I'm not mistaken. Co-written by Bob Weinstein. Weinstein, wow. Based on a story di- idea by his brother, Harvey Weinstein. Mm-hmm. Weinstein's known as big producers, blah, 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 blah. They're at a camp. Yep. Campgrounds. And uh, no, Jason funny. Alexander has hair in this movie. It says, spoiler alert, the shy virgin girl dies first, and the geeky <laughs> nerdy kid actually survives and helps defeat <laughs> the killer at the end. So that's a little genre yeah, breaker there. That is. Oh, what was that one um, that had a bunch of kids in it, and it was about like they opened a, opened a portal to hell and stuff, and uh, there was like claymation where this like one guy like he falls over and he turns into a bunch of little people and they're like chasing. Him. <laughs> God, what the heck movie was that? It was but speaking cool. of which, I saw one that came out a few years ago, 
and these kids are going camping and somehow they open the portal to the 80s. So now they're in an 80s slasher movie. It's very interesting, very well done. It's pretty funny. <laughs> what movie is I this? I don't remember. I have to find that. It was pretty funny. But, okay, what was the rest of the list? Uh, they had uh, Halloween 2, uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Maniac, and number one, Friday the 13th. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good list. I think. Halloween 2, but not Halloween? No Halloween. They had Halloween 2. I don't know why. Ten forgotten slasher films from the Okay, that'll be good that still have some stabs left in them. <laughs> this is from a site called whatculture.com. Madman. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at this. Madman special. Mars. Yeah. Yep. Special effects on anything. Yeah. That was, a, that was a good one. Oh, this is one of those lists where you got to go to the next page. Urgh, I hate those. Yeah. Number nine, Hell Night. Yeah, we talked Great about one. that one. Yeah. I liked Hell Night. That was a cool flick at the time. It was. Gothic horror. Stage yeah. fright. Stage fright. A.K.A. Deliria. I think that was a. Uh, it was one of those Italian okay. horror flicks with like super duper blood and stuff. Okay. Alone in the dark. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a good one. I dug that. I had Donald Pleasance and Martin Landau and stuff. So Jack Palance is in that too. House on Sorority Row. I like it. Yeah, I liked that one. And that the new was one cool. wasn't bad. You see the, new the, the head in the toilet. I forgot about that. <laughs> That's great stuff right there. They, they redid that a couple of years ago. Did they really? Yeah, it's got uh, Bruce Willis and Demi Moore's uh, daughter in it. Oh, that's right. Rumor. Yeah. yeah. Evil Dead Trap. Not Evil Dead, but Evil Dead Trap. I don't know okay, what that is. I don't is. know what that is. Japanese. Oh, it's a Japanese slasher. Okay. Movie. I guess they got some slasher movies. Nightmare. I remember that one. That was like one of those um, told a bunch of different stories, I think. Oh, okay. Mm, the Burning. You just talked about that one, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, and I mentioned something about The Burning, and you didn't comment on it, and I was shocked. I don't I don't think I've seen that. It one. had Jason Alexander in it, and he had hair. Holly Hunter. He had a full head of hair. Holly Hunter and Fisher Stevens also. Yeah. That was also by the Weinstein Brothers. Wow. Yeah. The same producers as The Sopranos and The Departed. Wow. It's got a hell of a pedigree on yeah. it. Yeah. I will have to watch that. Tom Savini did special effects on that. Sleepaway Camp, which we talked about. Bo- Booby Central in that one. <laughs> And yeah, that one first one had that shocking ending. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, slasher movies are fun. They are. I would like to write one sometime. We should. We are throwing one around in our head. Shh. But we won't tell anything about it. <laughs> we got to keep it under wraps, man. <laughs> Completely unique story about a cigar that killed people. That's right. You think you gave away the ending? Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what are you thinking? Hmm? So what were you thinking? Giving away the ending? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I always wanted to star in one. Not, not necessarily star, but be in one and get killed. I be the guy to be that, cool. yeah. What are you kids doing over there, Smack? Smack that uh, hatchet in the head. <laughs> yeah. That's one way to do it. It's one yep. way to get your 15 minutes of fame, I guess. I guess. Be, in be a fun. Slasher movie. Be fun. And you know, they make money. They, you know, that's why there's so many of them that get made. They're cheap. They're true. Make and they make their money. Yep. So get a chance to watch that uh, malevolence and bereavement there. Yeah, I will. There's a death and bereavement that might be the most difficult death I've ever watched on a movie. It was, the way this girl dies, it's just horrible. Really? I mean, it was uncomfortable. I mean, me being a fan of this, uh, oh, and these aren't lighthearted horror movies, by the way. This isn't one where you laugh, oh, just, you know, like, no, this is, you really feel the pain of someone dying. Great. Yeah. Make me depressed yeah. now. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Drink a fifth of scotch and watch these movies and you'll blow your head off. But bereavement has that Alexander... The Dario or whatever, and she is so fun to look at. I bet. You know who I'm talking oh, yeah, about I right am. now? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's also in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yeah. She's, she's cutie. She's, she's my new hottie. Yep, she is a cutie. Yep. It's one thing you can always count on with a slasher movie is hot naked chicks. Yeah. Although well, she hasn't gotten naked yet. She almost does in Texas Chainsaw. You get to see almost all of one boob, but not no nip. <laughs> a little side boob action, yeah. No nip. You get to see a lot of it. <laughs> Perf. But she's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's that's uh, another thing. Think of the uh, famous people before they got famous that were in slasher movies. The first Jennifer one, Aniston. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Leprechaun. Uh, yeah. Kevin Bacon and Friday the 13th. Yeah, yeah. Jason Alexander and Holly Hunter from uh, The Burning. Yeah. Tom Hanks was in one. Was he really? He was in that. Uh, alone. He Knows You're Alone. Was he really? I didn't know that. Yeah, he plays the the girls. She goes on a blind date, and it's him. And he ha- he was in his bosom buddies uh, style of the way he acted back then, where he was yeah. real bubbly and kind of wisecracking and that kind of stuff. Uh, 
Boy, there's got to be a bunch of them. Oh, yeah, there's a ton. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any more besides Jamie Lee Curtis, but... Yeah, that's, that's what She's made a big her. one, yeah. yeah that's, that's what, what made her. her. Yeah, the scream queen for the longest time. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, I just like that genre. It's fun. My mom liked it, so it was always something that, you know, uh, my other brothers and my dad didn't like them, so something me and my mom would sit around and watch. And we had fun. Ooh, the sexiest vampires in film. <laughs> That's going to have a lot of Twilight crap in it. Oh, we'll skip yeah. that now. Uh, scariest movies based on a common phobia. Oh. Ooh, like there's bound arachnophobia. to be arachnophobia. Yeah, that's got to be one. That movie freaked me out. I couldn't sleep that night. Oh, I, number one, spiders, arachnophobia. I have, I have that disease. Number two, buried alive from the premature burial. Mm. Never heard of that. Number three, needles in saw. Oh, that one girl mm. falls. In the, oh, that was mm. horrible. Yeah. Uh, loneliness. I am legend. Eh. Who cares about loneliness? Snakes. Yeah. Snake. I, there's a movie called Snake Island. Really. <laughs> At least it's not snakes on a plane. Yeah, now they have pictures of snakes on the plane. <laughs> they? They're showing the monkey fighting snakes. <laughs> yeah, on this Monday through Friday plane. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Number six, psychopathic families, House of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, there's a lot of those psychopathic mm-hmm. families. Uh, ghosts in the Sixth Sense, cats in the Uncanny. I don't think. Never I've heard seen of the uncanny. uncanny. It's got Bruce Willis. That's not. That's the wrong. <laughs> that's picture. the Sixth Sense. Yeah, it's the Sixth Sense. <laughs> Donald Pleasance is in the. There were a couple. Apparently. There were a couple of good ghost jumps in uh, the Sixth Sense. Yeah, there was the one under yeah. the bed, and one of the girls, guys, he's, he's in the bathroom. That one goes right behind him. It's like, ooh, creepy. Yeah. yeah, it was a good movie. He just hasn't made a good movie since then. <laughs> <laughs> eh, Signs was okay. Signs was okay. After that, but yeah, we'll see how After Earth does. It kind of be interesting to see if it doesn't. Is that what it's called? The one Something with like, Will yeah. Smith and his kid. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. The the weird sequel to a uh, Happiness Pursuit of Happiness. Is it? Where they're oh, in space. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It's him and his kid, right? Yeah. That's true. I have an idea that kid's going to grow up and be a jerk. Yeah. I think he's going to be one of those. He thinks he's the, the bee's shit. <laughs> yeah. Ends up being just shit. We'll see. I don't know. I don't so, know. That's you know, one of those Hollywood stories. You just going to have to wait to see how it turns out. But, yep. um, you know, I, I think Will Smith's a talented guy. I just think he's probably gotten a little out of his depth i don't think he's that great of an actor no personally. i don't think so but a lot of people like him so he's definitely likable yeah he does he's got a great screen persona mm-hmm. and talented yeah. otherwise as well yeah. so anyway so we're coming to the end of the rocky patel private seller and um i would, uh, I would give it a thumbs up for mild to medium fans to yeah. give it a shot but uh, if you're into the medium to full you're probably not gonna you're probably gonna want to pass on this one. I'm glad I tried it. I, I probably too. wouldn't probably wouldn't smoke it again. But you know, if someone gave it to me, I'd smoke it. But mm-hmm. I don't know if I'd buy it. But, but uh, bam, you know, they can't all be winners. Right. So. We tried it. But uh, yeah, if you're in the mood for a mild cigar, and one of these is lying around, pick it up, and you shouldn't be too disappointed. Shouldn't be disappointed at all, actually. <laughs> you shouldn't be too disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Raining endorsement there, Randy. <laughs> well, because it's not a bad cigar. I don't want it to come across as a bad cigar. It's just not no, I doing mean, you what know, I want to do. The, the, the burn evened up on it. It's got a nice even burn now. Uh, looks good. Smells good. Uh, it's got a good even flavor to it. It's just not in my wheelhouse, per se. Exactly. Um, I tend to like my cigars a little stronger, with a little more flavor, mm-hmm. a little more complexity. And this is just pretty much the uh, same as it started as it ended yep. so for, people, note. for people who like that consistent one note thing um, you got go a cigar for it, for it. Yeah, yeah, go, go for it so, um, so don't forget to check us out on Podomatic Spreaker iTunes um, add us on the iTunes there and subscribe to us and don't forget to give us the five stars and a little bit of a review if we can that helps us move up the ranks there check us out also on um, YouTube YouTube correct we've got the videos on YouTube and you can also comment there and uh, don't forget to check out Cigar Bombs too I'll probably have some interviews on there with um Jorge Padron and um, Jose Blanco from the Cats event. Mm-hmm. And what else? Um, like us on Facebook at the Calypso Cigar Shop and Lounge. Some upcoming guests that aren't booked yet, so we can't tell you when they're going to be on, but we do know Jonathan Drew. We're going to do a phone interview with him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ryan Poehler at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, probably going to have Todd Haley by uh, Todd Haley. Todd Vance. <laughs> Todd Vance. Esteban Carreras is Todd you Vance. Know, Todd Haley was the Cowboys receivers coach. For, for many years and I guess that's where I, I keep coming up with Todd Haley and plus we talked to Pedro the other day yeah, so yeah that was a great interview last week yeah it was if you hadn't heard the uh, the Pedro Haley interview where we reviewed the uh, KNF Lancero 
if you are at all a fan of music in general, mm-hmm. listen to it. He's very, very knowledgeable about music. And um, his dad, of course, was Bill Haley of Bill Haley and his comets. And um, we talk a lot about fifties music and classical music and everything in mm-hmm. between. So it's a great interview. If you haven't heard it yet, go back and listen to it. Find it. It is awesome. And we're going to definitely have Pedro in again to do some more reviews with us. And um, so just keep listening to us. And if you have any questions or comments, Don't forget to give them to us, and it was great smoking with you. Anything else, Randy? I'm good. Have a good night, Brandon. See you next time.